everyone. Getting back into uh, work and making videos and hopefully more live videos if you enjoy it. So let me know your comments and feedback um, as always and I'll take that on board. Let me know if you want to see more. Um, I know I should give you guys more notice for these but they do make me incredibly nervous going live so sometimes um, the only way I can do it is just jump on and hit go. So that's what I've done today. But what I want to talk about today is uh, dogs that are barking, lunging, pulling on a walk, especially dogs that are really uh, distracted around other dogs, or it can be anything else that's setting them off on a walk. And we have um, been talking about this a fair bit lately um, on on the page in the Dog Matters community group and on the email list, which is all the where all the action is mainly going to be happening coming up. So uh, more about that later. And I'm just going to um, check the comments on my computer screen and share this into the community group as well. And I'll be right with you. Uh, but let me know if you're on, say hi. Hi Becky, let me know how your day's going. Have you been working with lots of dogs today? What have you been up to? Share. And uh, just sharing this quickly, I can't multitask just while we wait for a couple of people to come. So where I'm sharing this to is the Dog Matters community. So if you're not in that Facebook group, make sure you join that. It's just called Dog Matters Community. Um, and that's our group. And Facebook groups enable us to have a little bit more discussion than pages sometimes. So that's why I'm sharing it into there and getting that going. But let me know in the comments if you have a dog that is distracted on walks, um, pulls on walks, barks and lunges at other dogs on walks may be worse than barking and lunging, maybe they're screaming. Um, I've seen dogs that flip around screaming, um, stuff like that. And let me know also how does it make you feel because I asked this in the group a while back and a lot of people use words like anxious, frustrated, embarrassed, worried, they're scared to take their dog out at all. A lot of these dogs aren't getting walked at all uh, because of this issue. And someone commented, another trainer commented actually, which was a really good point, that people are more worried about what others might think of them more than worried about what might actually happen to their dog or to maybe another dog or person because of the issue they're having with their dog, which um, was a really good point and really interesting. Another word that people used a lot was judged. They feel judged and I can definitely relate to that because I've worked with dogs that have done the screaming thing just because they're being reactive and to passers by it can look and sound like the dog's being absolutely tortured um, and all I'm doing is standing there holding the lead so if your dog is carrying on making a big fuss people are feeling it's making them look bad and I think they, they feel judged because they feel like they're judged as an owner as if it's their fault that their dog is like this. Um, and that, you know, maybe the people are thinking that they've got a really aggressive dog. Some reactive dogs are aggressive and some are just doing it out of overexcitement or frustration. A lot of the on lead stuff is out of frustration because they don't know how to handle either their excitement or other arousal that's coming up when they're seeing another dog and they really want to get to that other dog for whatever reason and it's coming out as an aggressive display. But no matter what the reason is, um, it's important that we do stop it because it is rude dog behavior. And if you're having this issue, um, let me know in the comments, but if you're having this issue, don't feel bad. Don't let it stop you from taking your dog out. It's more about finding the right help. So I wanted to just pop in today and make sure that people are getting the right help. Um, and I wanted to make sure everyone saw what I put out yesterday, which is this um, PDF document that can be a handy resource for people. This is what it looks like. It's called From Frantic to Focused. Very original, lots of Fs in there. <laughs> Might be lots of Fs happening on your walk when you're all frustrated walking your dog. Hopefully not. Um, but I want some feedback on this. And when you um, go to the link, which I'm gonna put in the comments section to download this PDF document, You'll get um, access to it straight away as soon as you've confirmed your email, but you will be added to the email list. 
And that's where you want to be because over the coming weeks, we're going to be getting right into this topic for those that are interested. And by opting in to get this document, I know that you are having this issue so I can tailor the content for you. And we're going to be having some really um, more in-depth discussions about it and helping people out because this is a widespread issue that I want people to get sorted. But just a quick overview of what actually is in here, what you're going to get. So when we work on dog reactivity issues, there's things that people need to know, or that their dogs need to know, and the owner of course, um, that are skills that happen before you ever go out on the walk and work with other dogs. Um, at the same time, this isn't a process that should be taking a year or more to fix. This can be done in less time than that. So if you've um, tried training before, maybe you've gotten help from trainers even before, and you've basically come to the conclusion that it's not fixable or that it's going to take you six years to fix it, and that's sort of deflating and making you want to give up, don't despair because there's other things that maybe you haven't tried and maybe you just haven't got the right guidance for your particular dog or your particular circumstances. So don't feel discouraged. Don't give up if you're having this issue and you don't know what to do about it. Um, but it is important not to just jump out onto the street and start trying to work with the dog when it's in the heat of the issue. So if you go for a walk and another dog's coming by only a couple of meters away or walking past, that's not the time to be trying to fix it. If you're already in the thick of the situation where the dog is already in that state where it's reacting and bouncing around and vocalizing and not giving you any focus whatsoever, it's very difficult for learning to occur. Um, it's very unlikely that learning will occur. I understand that sometimes that happens because another thing that we need to acknowledge here is that we live in the real world. We can't bubble wrap our dogs. We can't just not take them out anywhere. And we can't go out on a walk and expect to never see another dog. So what people need also is ways to deal with it when that does happen and ways to try and avoid it as much as possible while you're working on the issue, um, but not to feel like you can't leave the house because one of the, the saddest fates for a dog, I think, is not being taken anywhere ever because of a behavioral issue that can be fixed. So there's some things that you should work on at home though to get your dog proficient in before you start taking them out though. So I'm just gonna run through quickly what they are and there's um, more of an outline in the PDF that you're going to be able to download with the link. So there's some key skills that your dog needs to know before you work around other dogs at all. Um, the first one is yielding to leash pressure. Sounds maybe like a bit of a technical term um, but all that means is that if your dog feels a little bit of pressure on their collar on the whoop, flashing everyone didn't mean to do that. Um, if they feel a little bit of a pull on the collar we want them to not resist it and pull against it, but to go with it. So we want them to feel a tiny bit of pressure and give to it straight away, not be having to haul them if ever you want them to follow you. We want the dog to be so good at this that it's like they're following you without even having to watch you and they know when that leash pressure is going to come on and they just feel it start to come on and they turn and come with you. We want a dog that follows you and that's one of the ways that we're going to get them to do that. Um, related to that is loose, loose leash walking. So a nice um, leash walking manners. You want to be able to have the... Ha oh, thanks Paige. Hello. Um, you want to be able to have good leash manners because if you've got tension in the leash you're setting yourself and your dog up to fail before you even see another dog. Another thing about having tension in the leash is that when you see another dog and you've had this issue for a while and you're already feeling anxious about it, you're going to tense up yourself and that's going to go straight down the leash to the dog and they can feel you do that. And if you see another dog and go, oh crap, there's another dog. The dog's going to feel that and they're going to think, well, you know, she's worried, something's clearly up. They're also going to get that cue from you that something is coming and everyone's going to be more on edge and then 
as one of my favorite trainers Brady says, tension creates tension. So if you put tension on, you're creating tension in the dog and it's just a matter of time before something goes wrong after that. So as soon as they see the dog, they've already got all that tension built up and then they just explode. Now, when I say a loose leash though, another thing we wanna watch is that they're not getting too much freedom. So they shouldn't have the whole leash wandering out in front of you if they have reactivity issues. They should know how to do a structured walk next to you following you. And your dog can't follow you if they're out ahead at you of you taking the lead um, because they won't, they're not, they don't have eyes in the back of their head. They can't see what you're doing if you're behind them. And if they can't see you, they can't follow you. So they should be next to you just so that they can follow you, but with the leash loose. So what that means is you can still hold the leash shorter, but not tight. So even if you have the leash this short, that piece of lead between you and the dog should be loose. Hi Ariel, how are you going? Thanks for tuning in. Um, so the next skill that you want to teach is um, the leave it command. So when I teach the leave it command, I teach it that it means don't just leave that that you want to go for, whether it's something you want to grab, a bit of food on the ground, or in this case another dog. Don't just leave that alone. But the alternative behavior that I do want you to do is to look at me. So this is a focus skill as well. You say leave it, they stop what they're doing and pay attention to you straight away and that's how it should look. And we teach this um, with leaving things like food, something really tempting and then you can try it with all sorts of things that would tempt your dog until you get out on the street, use it with tempting things on the side of the road and then eventually you can use it with other dogs. And a great example of this is the dingoes at the Bundy Zoo, which I posted some photos of today. I went to visit them today, which was great. Um, we taught them the leave it command just with food. And one of their issues was dog reactivity because they don't like domestic dogs. It's even, it's, it's very foreign to them and they are a bit territorial. So they would have this issue and without even really planning it, just teaching the leave it command, leaving food, they will be just starting to look at another dog and we'll say leave it and they'll stop what they're doing and, and look at us um, and that's worked really well so that's a good example of how that can help in the situation so that you can get on with it and enjoy your walk um, another thing is coming when called also known as a recall and obviously if you've got a, a dog that's reactive or in any way aggressive you won't be letting them off lead around other dogs so it doesn't have to be straight away the perfect off-leash recall, although we're always wanting you to work towards that, but to be able to get to the point of going out on the street and working with other dogs around, you do want at least a solid on-leash recall where your dog will stop what they're doing straight away and come directly to you as soon as you call them on one command. Speaking of one command, anything that you teach your dog, you should be able to say one command once and then they respond immediately. We shouldn't be reasoning with our dogs, nagging our dogs, or waiting till our dogs feel like listening to us. Um, another thing is place training. You know I'm a big fan of that. So having your dog stay on a, a place mat or a station, it can be any object basically that your dog can fit on. And this is another great way of giving your dog an alternative behavior, something to concentrate on that's been rewarding to them in the past, um, concentrate on working with me, don't worry about that other dog. It's also great for structure around the home and a dog with structure and rules and boundaries around the home and some good solid obedience is a lot less likely to have behavior problems in general, including reactivity. Um, automatic focus. So this is focus where you don't have to give them a command, but your dog sees the value in you and wants to offer you focus. Once you've got focus, everything else is easier. So that's sort of what it's all about. If any of this isn't making sense or you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you like what I'm saying, give me some likes or some hearts so I know to keep going. Um, and the other thing that I like the dogs to have is a solid sit command and stay. Um, very important. In general with dog obedience, at least a sit stay and a good solid recall are some of the top things um, or the two top things that I like a dog to know. When you're at home you want to make sure you've got a good relationship and bond with your dog. 
that's important for any training. Um, and you want to have what is referred to as the nothing in life is free policy around the home. Um, whether you believe in the dominance stuff or not, it's a great way to fit in extra training without thinking about it through the day and having your dog look to you for guidance for things and work for what they receive because they can become privileged, entitled little brats if we just give them everything all the time. Um, Self-control and impulse control, that's going to come from proofing your other commands and working on your leave it command as well. So basically they're the things that your dogs should know before you start working them around other dogs because it's important that dogs have an alternative to do when we're telling them what not to do and uh, most of you should know I am a believer in also telling a dog what not to do not just what to do but we should always be heavily rewards based and setting them up to succeed and teaching them these other skills that they can use first so let me grab the link for it for this document for anyone that hasn't got it yet and I'll put that in the comments and while I'm doing that if anyone wants to put any comments or questions in go ahead there it is so there's a link there for anyone that um, hasn't already got this now once you've got it like I said you will be on the um, the email list and you'll be on a special one for people that have this issue with their dog and want to further dis the discussion and learning about it um, so I'm going to send out some emails over the next couple of days to get us started um, you can either send me an email by reply or you can put it in the comments here or in the Facebook group of if you have looked at this document and you have feedback for me on that let me know um, and I want to make sure that this is helpful for people the other thing I want to make sure is that it's not too much information I one thing I did have trouble with with this is I wanted to get you guys some good results but there is there is a fair bit involved in this issue so I also didn't want to give you so much information that you're overwhelmed and think I can't do this because you can do this thank you Kelly and I missed a comment page Riley nails leave it with everything except walks he's reactive to both humans and dogs I think it's over excitement because he loves every dog and human he just barks and lunges at them so yeah it can be over excitement <coughs> Um, it could be, you know, some degree of aggression as well. Um, we don't want people to be in denial that the dog has an aggression problem, but a lot of reactivity is just coming from frustration and excitement or anxiety of not knowing what to do as well. With any command that you can get at home, but then not out on a walk, that's a proofing issue. So what could be happening is you're missing a step in between at home and out on a walk around other people and dogs and what I would say that step probably is is proofing the leave it command with things that slowly more gradually increase in difficulty for him to leave it don't just do food mix it up and also practice with the humans and the dogs at a, a large distance if you're using a leave it command for this you want to say leave it as soon as the dog looks at it same as if you're using corrections, you want to be correcting as soon as you know that the dog is on track to the behavior. So don't wait for you to be too close that the dog just cannot possibly listen to you because it's too far gone. Try and do it at a further distance is what I would say, but we will talk more about that. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly says, I think she's talking about the document. It's clear, valid, and easy to understand, helps to break it down into steps. Renata, I've just adopted a rescue dog and he's good at his sit, stay, drop commands at home, but if he's interested in something, he will just ignore me. How can I make him focus on me more? Um, first of all, Renata, go through all the steps in here 
and make sure that your dog is good at all of those at home. And then like I just said, slowly proof them outdoor. Don't take a big leap from at home or in the backyard with a couple of things going on to out on the street with traffic and dogs and bikes and skateboards and people and everything all too much. But if your issue is um, distraction and not reactivity, all of the things in here still apply. So basically everything in here is going to also address the issue of dogs that are too distracted when you leave the house. And we're gonna talk about proofing things and making it that they'll listen to you everywhere, not just at home. Really, really common though, you're not alone. Um, I, all the time at class, would have dogs that couldn't focus when they first got there because it was a new environment. And the owners always say, he's good at home, I promise he's so good at home, I don't know why he's not doing it today. And it's just too much too soon, too much distraction. Um, so maybe just take a step back and practice, you know, first just outside your front door and, um, you know, then front lawn and then a quiet park rather than those busier areas. I hope that that helps. Let me know if you need more clarification on that. Hi, Sharonika. Michelle, I have a six month old small rescue dog. She gets so excited when anyone comes to the house or kids come home from school and constantly jumps and play bites, not viciously, but still it's a problem. Also, when we open the door, she bolts and runs away really fast. This, um, again, if you teach some obedience, that's going to definitely help with that. Um, over excitement when people are coming in, take control, okay? So if you've got someone coming over and you know that this is an issue, put your dog on a lead so that you can intervene early and do that place command, teach that really solidly as well. Um, but you wanna disrupt the play biting um, as early as possible. And one thing that people make the mistake of a lot is they know their dog has a problem, but they, they don't um, be proactive enough to take steps to prevent it and block it. So put your dog on the lead, be ready to go, and also have an alternative behavior to reward them for as well. Um, so hopefully you guys know, I do believe in corrections. You can correct dogs, but I also am very strong on the dog knows the alternative first, and the alternative is taught in a very fun, rewarding way. Beck, uh, aggro biting puppy, similar thing. Um, puppies mouthing and biting, really common issue. Lots of things you can try. Um, I do, you know, teach the puppy alternative behaviors first, like I just said. And one way, um, I'm gonna do a vlog soon, hopefully in the next couple of days, about what exactly punishment is and what I mean when I'm talking about punishment. But with an eight week old puppy, it should be quite easy to cut off all attention as soon as the biting and rough play starts. Do you have kids that the puppy is biting or is it you? Because having kids with puppies biting, um, that's more complicated and because kids always encourage, if it's just you, it should be quite easy to put the puppy out the back um, immediately, put the puppy in their crate, um, some sort of timeout and immediately end all interaction as soon as the biting starts. And that's all, always the first thing I try. And if you have a kid, how, how old is your kid? Your child's? Your offspring? Because the young ones, it's, it's super hard. And I'm not as good at training children as I am at training dogs, although I hear it's the same principles. Um, but one thing that I do teach kids in private lessons is be a treat. So you should always be supervising if you have young children and biting puppies. Oh, those seven and nine, that's getting to the point that they can understand a little more themselves because usually the biggest issues is more like four-year-olds. Um, but still, you can have them just end any games, end any attention, put the puppy away. Um, but we might have to do another Q&A later in the Facebook group. So join the Dog Matters community if you haven't already and see how you go with what I just said and then we can elaborate on the conversation in there. So um, this live video is mostly about the bark barking and lunging towards other dogs. So if does anyone have any further questions on that or feedback on the document or questions about the document or the training, 
otherwise we'll probably wrap up in a minute. <coughs> Alright guys, looks like that's it. So if there's no other questions, we'll leave it there. But I will publish this live video onto the page and keep an eye on the comments. So you can still leave comments, feedback, questions. Make sure though you get that document because as I said, all the exciting stuff about this topic is going to be continuing on the email list through that conversation. Um, and we've got some exciting stuff planned for that. So hope you have found this helpful. Hope you um, really benefit from the document and happy to receive any feedback on that. Kelly says, hang on. Okay, I'm hanging on. Did you have a question, Kelly? Ariel, glad you tuned in. I'm glad you tuned in too. Thanks for coming. Has everyone learned something? Just hit like or, or the hearts if you've learned something today that is helpful or you've got clarity on something or if you, you know, just want to support me because I'm cool. But make sure you get the document. Kelly, you have a rescue dog who reacts aggressively to people, dogs, bikes, etc. Same thing. Have you taught them all the skills we just went over in the document? And we'll go from there. When, like I said earlier, this um, PDF and a link is in the comments. I am um, writing it as if your dog is reacting to other dogs because that's an extremely common issue. But as the broader picture, it's dogs that are overly distracted and they get out of the um, environment and, uh, and they can't even. So it can be any undesirable reactions or lack of focus around anything that's setting them off. So people, dogs, bicycles, lots of dogs are reactive to wheels and things that move. He gets very aggro and when grabbing his collar, he will redirect. Just starting to teach him all those things and setting boundaries in place. So you're at the start of the journey. Um, if you can help it, I don't recommend grabbing the collar. Use the leash so that you've got distance and try and steer him away just with the lead. You can walk backwards and call him away. Um, but like I said, you really need those other skills first because that's the foundation you're laying the foundation for all the work that's to come and you're going to be setting yourself up for a lot more success later so feel free to send me an email or post in the group um, as you're going through the steps in that PDF um, so that uh, we can take it step by step because if you're getting into situations where you're grabbing his collar and he's redirecting now that um, is a sign, you know, and you've we've already said you've only just started teaching him all those things and putting more boundaries in place and he needs that first. So take a step back, try and keep your distance in the meantime. And even if your walk time becomes training time for a while and you're teaching him those things in the backyard, the front yard and making up for his exercise with the mental um, drain that is this training, you know, as long as you're keeping on track and progressing, it's not going to be too long before you're back out on the walk, working on it outdoors around those other distractions and things that are challenging him. But make sure you work through all those steps. And like I said, let me know if that document is too overwhelming too, if you're putting too much in there and you think I need to take a step back myself with you guys and give you less to start with because it's all about breaking it down into little steps that goes for training dogs and for training people. All right, so the comments can continue. I will be around for a little bit longer um, to check those. But other than that, make sure you get that document. If you found this helpful or you know anyone with a reactive dog that needs to see it, make sure you tag them in the comments and share the video. <laughs> Ariel says, are you doing these every day? Do you want me to? I know Ariel does. There will be some special ones on the list of the people that got this. There will be a special group. People that have downloaded this will get more of this type of information, more videos, 
more written things and that sort of thing. So if you really want more on this topic, make sure you start with that, but then you'll be on the list and you'll get more that way. I will be in touch regularly um, because this is an issue that we are highlighting probably now and for the next month or so um, and continuing on on the email list for those that need it. But if people would like to see more live videos on the page here in general on different topics, let me know in the comments. It is um, your comments, support and asking for them that gets me to do them. So let me know. All right, I think we're wrapping up. So um, feel free to keep commenting. Let me know what you want to see, if you want to see more, if this is helpful. Um, if you thought it was terrible, don't let me know because it'll hurt my feelings. Just don't like the page. All right, so <laughs> uh, thanks everyone and I'll catch you around.